Today's video focuses on a forum post that I made uh, where running uh, the Skyrim script extender in Proton is concerned. For those of you who are who followed my Skyrim video, and you still can, because um, if you follow the steps for uh, setting up your plugins and everything, uh, you can pretty much still follow that video. Just incorporate what you'll see here if you're going to use the Proton end of things, because everything else in that other video is still relevant. Okay, rather than having to mess about with renaming your exe files like I've seen people mentioning on GitHub and that sort of thing, you can now actually edit some files so that you can run programs that Steam did not install into Proton and use them with your software. I'll show you what I'm talking about. But before we even cover that information, I did want to mention that there is a wrapper for wine tricks available called Proton Tricks. I'm not going to use this method, nor am I even going to attempt this because I'm pleased with wine tricks just the way it is. And the things I'm going to show you in today's exercise, you can also use in uh, your uh, Play on Linux. Because really, you know, Play on Linux sometimes has a little bit of problems installing dependencies, and you can use wine tricks to also, um, you know, install dependencies in those uh, wine prefixes that you made there. So pay close attention to this because you can easily translate it to play on Linux if you choose. All right, so let's go ahead and minimize our web browser. And I don't have Steam running right now. This is my temp directory right here. I want you to see what's going to happen here when I launch Steam. You're going to notice that some temporary files are going to open up, all right? And uh, Steam has uh, launched in a silent mode. In an earlier video, I show you how to do that. Let's go ahead and right-click on this and then select to run the Elder Scrolls Skyrim. Look what just happened. It just dumped a bunch of shell scripts on me that I can actually use. So uh, let's go ahead and have a look at these. I'm going to exit this because I use the Skyrim script extender when I'm playing my game because I want to play all the cool mods. I don't want to play the game vanilla. Well, vanilla with a little bit of panache. All right, so what I'm going to do here is uh, you're going to see that there is a script called Proton Run. All right, I'm going to drag this here into my text editor. Let's uh, change this view over to Word Wrap. Line 5 is the line that you're interested in here. Okay, um, so you have the uh, command to run the game right here. And it's pointing to my custom directory. This is one reason why I'm not using Proton Tricks, uh, because I do have a custom directory and I want to make sure that it's going to uh, run my applications. So uh, you'll see that it's uh, pointing to my Skyrim launcher. Well, if I want it to run um, the Skyrim script extender, I could just change that. Now what I did was I actually made copies of Proton Run here. I have one called Skyrim and this one opens the Skyrim script extender. You'll see here that that's exactly what I did. I changed it to SK, SKSE Loader. Okay. I also have another one here for Mod Organizer. All right. So now if I really want to um, manage my mods, and this doesn't really work that great, but I set this up as an example for the video here. What I essentially did was, you'll see here, I have Mod Organizer directory within my... Um, Steam apps where the game is installed. You don't have to install them in that directory because with this shell script here, you can pretty much, you know, put the software anywhere you want to as long as you have the, as long as you have the correct locations defined. So Proton Run has been made into some new scripts here. And you can see here, just by running one here and executing it, 
Mod Organizer opens. Now, if I had this set up to actually manage the mods, right now it's showing that all of them are unmanaged. I could actually have it launch other executable files, and I put this to the test uh, the day before yesterday, where I had it use uh, the uh, generate uh, force new idols um, and a few other things. But I prefer to manage all of my mods manually um, because the game just seems to work a lot better for me that way. But you can also run other things. Let's say you have a same save game editor that you want to use, or um, maybe you want to run special software so you can make your own mods. You can do this. So this is amazing stuff here. Let's go ahead and close this. So now you have an idea of how you can get uh, external executable files that Proton did not install for you. But let's say one of those dependencies or... Um, one of those um, programs that you brought into uh, your uh, Proton bottle has additional dependencies. That's what I meant to say here. Let me pull up my uh, dirty little uh, note sheet here, and uh, let's have a look at something. Okay, first, let's uh, have a look at our wine prefix here. Basically, what I want to do is install uh, exact into this prefix. So you would need to go wine prefix equals the location of your Steam apps comp data. This number defines the application ID and the prefix. And then you just run wine tricks and exact. I uh, have all these on a cheat sheet because I hate typing. And this is an excellent time saver too. All right, so let's go ahead and paste this command here. And you'll see here that now Wine is going to complain. It doesn't have mono. I'm just going to press cancel on all this nonsense and let it configure the Wine storage. Once that's done, you're going to see in the terminal the output of the installation in progress. Once that's completed, Wine Tricks puts a log into your prefix and it tells you what it has installed. There is a side effect though. In users, it adds uh, your username. Normally, this directory has a public and Steam user. You can keep that directory or delete it. I really don't care. It isn't really going to hurt anything if you keep it there, but you know, you can uh, move it to trash too if you don't want it. All right. So now we have uh, in, used wine tricks. You can also, if you were to drop uh, the exact from that line, what it's going to do is it loads the GUI version, and then you can go in and you can, uh, you know, pick applications to install from a list. Moving right along here, what's next? Oh, let's run wine config. Okay. So basically, I've already shown you the path. Okay. There's our path to our wine prefix. Okay, but now we also need to provide a path to the executable, and that's in the bin directory for that. Okay, all of your executables are here. So, you're just basically assigning the wine prefix and the wine path and just telling it to run wine config. What's going to happen is, it's going to open up this configuration utility, and this is your friend for getting those problematic applications working. Let's say you're running um, a mod organization to a mic. I can tell you, I've already tried Rybash and um, Mod Organizer um, and a few other applications, and I didn't have to do anything special. But you may be running some wild, wonky software that needs something extra. So, in here... You can go into your libraries. You can define a special um, 
you know, dynamic link library and tell it that you need a, a native or a built-in or whatever, you can manage that here. Moreover, some applications may require to emulate a desktop. So you can do that here as well, and you can even configure uh, uh, mouse uh, capturing. Now, some of you who are running uh, Skyrim may need to actually activate that because uh, you're getting a little bit of a jerky mouse thing, and I've had that happen to me in Wine too. So it's good to know that. Other desktop integration options. Mm -hmm. All right, let's look and know about here. And you'll see that the current stable 373 of Proton is actually Wine 3.15. Hey, cool stuff here. All right, so everything I just showed you here, just using these Wine prefix, uh, using the information here, you can actually apply this to play on Linux too. So you can use Wine tricks to manage uh, all your dependencies and play on Linux. That's awesome stuff. I mean, that's power, man. The power of open source. Okay, those are all of the dirty tricks that I have discovered in Steam Proton thus far, but I have still a little bit more to do. Um, this is still new stuff to me, but as I'm going along and discovering these things, I might put together another video here and there. Who knows? You might be seeing a little bit more... Um, if you have any comments for the show or uh, show ideas, please uh, put them at cupoflinux.com. After some of the comments I've seen in the original version of this video, I have decided I'm not going to be reading YouTube comments anymore. If people can't express an attitude of gratitude, I'm not going to I'm not going to view comments in that area. That's all there is to it. So visit cupoflinux.com if you have feedback for yours truly, because that's the only way I'm that's the only place I'm gonna see it. Um anyway, I don't know what I'm gonna be doing next on Cup of Linux, but I'm sure I'll have something equally exciting. So until then, peace out. Mm -hmm.